All right, let's get down to some trade talks. I saw a couple things that are coming through, so I'm really excited uh, to go over some rumors and just some things that I think that are gonna happen or might not happen. So I got a list right here in front of me that I'm pulling up, and so let's uh, let's get right into it. Um, wait for the list. Um, but I will tell you, the first person I'm looking at is Timo Meyer. Uh, we talked about him earlier, so let's pull up his uh, page real quick. I got his DB his DB page, his hockey reference page. So. Uh, the reason you're looking at getting Timo Meyer is he is uh, a phenomenal player, doing phenomenally well. He has 28 goals in 50 games. So you're looking at almost, I mean, that's probably almost it's like a 40 goal, play, 40 goal pace right there. So that's exactly why you'd want a player like this. Um, and so with that, I'm going to pause actually. Get my screen a little bigger. All right, back at it. So, yeah, we're going to talk about Timo Meyer. So, uh, San Jose Sharks got him. They drafted him. They did everything well. But the thing is, is that he is going to be – his. he's on an expiring deal. He's at UFA at the end of the season. And his qualifying offer – so, that means the person who retains his rights. Uh, Timo Meyer has the option of signing a one-year $10 million offer. And I don't think he's going to do that. And so – and I don't, and I think the Sharks are in a position where they're going to rebuild. They're, they're wanting to get the most for their asset. Um, and so I think we're with them. He is going to be traded. Now, the thing is they're talking about is the New Jersey Devils are talking about wanting this player, which is f makes sense. Again, we talked about 40 goals, 48 points, almost a point per game player playing above his career, his normal career. So this is exciting for him. We're excited for Timo. We want him to do well. I think he's, and I, I would love to keep him on the Sharks, but I just know they're not in a position to, um, keep a player like this long term because just, it just doesn't make sense right you know and look he's 26 years old at this point so he's looking to make that big money contract um so he's gonna go out there sign an eight nine probably like an eight by eight or something like that he's looking to stick with the team and the devil's in a position where they, they want to be good long term and they're in the position where they've either come out of the rebuild and they're 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 really playoff um they're, they're a wild card team. They're a playoff contender. They played f so hot at the start of the season. And so they're definitely, you know, looking to make a, a good playoff run. So that's exactly why they would target Timo Meyer right here. So I think that's going to be one of the ones that they're, they're going to have to trade their first. And actually, just to jump over real quick into another thing that they're talking about is um, is that the – oh, never mind. That was a different thing. <laughs> so Timo Meyer, I'm pretty sure he'll be going to the Devils. Uh, again, they're going to have to go with the first. Um, probably is a prospect as well. I think San Jose will take anyone at this point. They said they're not going to rebuild. I'm pretty sure they're going to want to rebuild. So um, I, I just think that's the makes the most sense. Uh, another team they can pick up is Seattle. Um, but Seattle really, I mean, they have their centers and they have some de they have okay a team and they're playing well again. They're pl but they have an, just an okay. Uh, they don't have no stars, right? And, and Matty Beniers just got hurt as well. So. Again, makes sense for San Jose, San Jose to trade this to the New Jersey Devils. Also, New Jersey is outside their uh, conference, too. So they wouldn't have to face Timo Meyer or send it to a person within the division or conference. And they can send them way over to the other side, literally the other side of the country. <laughs> so um, the next one we're talking about is, which I think is this is going to be so silly, Thatcher Demko. So Vancouver Canucks has talked about the possibility of trading Thatcher Demko, which is mind-blowing, to be honest, okay? I don't know why you would do that. Uh, you can see clearly, I'm um, going to zoom in on him. You can see he's playing so well, and he's still so young, which is a crazy thing. So I'm like, why would you trade him? You you, you need a goalie long-term, right? So if you look at him, age 27, um, he is not playing well. But mind you, the, the Red Wings, the Vancouver Canucks are not a good team right now. So you, you look at these stats and you're like, oh, he's not doing well, but he's on a bad team too. So I, I don't understand why there there's such an issue with this. Like you let him let him run out. Like, but I guess if you again, I don't know what the no one knows what the Vancouver Canucks are doing. They got they're tied up with all these big contracts, uh, and so I'm gonna jump over the screens. They're tied with these big contracts, and I again I don't know what they're trying to do with the team because they have OEL on a big contract. You have Garland's got a, another year left. Has JT Miller. And you just signed Kuzmenko. You're, you know, for two years. So you, what are you trying to do? Why are you trying to bridge? Why are you trying to bridge this type of contract over? I know Kuzmenko. You could have got a lot for him. So why don't you just commit to a retool or a rebuild? Um, the thing is, Pedersen's also up in two years, right? Or uh, I think it's the end of next year. End of next, you know, in two years. So they're trying. So I think what they're trying to do is they're trying to entice Pedersen to stay with them, um, and. And that's why they say, oh, we'll sign Kuzmenko. Kind of like what, in my opinion, the Red Wings did with signing Cop and Sherratt. They're like, hey, Larkin, stay here. We're going to build around you. Here's some guys we brought in, right? That didn't really work out for them that well. But 
trading Demko would be uh, to me like that. That's your goalie of the future still. I think Spencer Mar or Martin's just fine. Um, but he's, I think he's now Demko. I think Demko, we just know, is a little a top half of the league goalie. Just maybe not this year. It's a down year, but we know he's a really good goalie that can really perform. So, uh, next over, we're talking about Alexi Lafreniere. I talked about Alexi Lafreniere before. Um, the Blackhawks are talking about if if they want if they want Kane or if the Rangers want Kane, they want either Kako or they want Alexi Alexi Lafreniere. So now we look at Alexi right now. He was first overall draft pick in the twenty twenty yeah twenty twenty draft. No, is he? No, no, it was no, it was twenty twenty one. Uh, and so the 2021 draft. Now it's own power. Oh my goodness, losing my mind here. So um, let's let's look it up real quick. Um, I'm curious. I'm not now. I'm curious. Now I'm curious. What, what? Where was he? All right, back at it. So yeah, no, he was he was the 2020 draft uh, number one overall pick because uh, that was the draft that the Red Wings got a cider. So um, so the, K the Chicago Blackhawks are talking about getting either Kako Kako, Alexis Lafreniere, and one of the reasons I could see them trading them. Um, it makes sense because they're not playing as well up to their draft stock rate. You have Alexis Lafreniere was the number one overall draft pick in 2021. Kako Kako was, I believe, number two overall in 2019. So you just these players are not really playing up to their draft stock, right? First overall, you expect, you know, at least three quarters of a point per game um, from a player like that, right? Uh, and especially with maybe like Kako too, um, similar production, right? I mean. Um, it's actually a little bit right around where he's played for his whole career. At least Kako's consistent in that sense. Um, obviously, Lafreniere is playing a little bit better, I think. But yeah, a little bit better than his draft stock. But again, or a little bit better than his career, I'd say. But right now, playing left wing, he does not. He was not drafted as a left winger. He was drafted as a center. So um, it it makes sense why Chicago wanted to ask, but they're I don't think they're going to get him. And you're going to get first by a, a, a mid a first some and uh maybe a mid-tier prospect because mind you kane has a no move clause right so or no trade clause so, no move clause um so that means that he can get to choose where he wants to go and he says hey if he outspoke and said hey i want to go to the rangers they'd lose the leverage similar to what they the philadelphia flyers did with Giroux. they didn't get as much as they could have because um we all knew that Giroux wanted to go to florida it just made it just made sense so um, that, that's kind of where I'm at. I, I don't think they're going to get either of those, they, but they will get a first. I almost guarantee it. So, uh, next up we have is, uh, Vladimir Tarasenko. So Vladimir Tarasenko play, doing very well this year for him. Um, 10 goals, 19 assists, 29 points in 36 games. Um, playing consistently with what he's done throughout his whole career, playing similar ice time, which is awesome. Good for him to utilize him in the proper way. And so the, the reason I'm bringing up him is though the Calgary Flames are looking into him. And it's what it, the most interesting thing is is for me right now is, is there actually the rumor saying by Frank Saravalli is that the Flames are trying to target rentals in this case. And I, that makes that kind of makes sense. But it's also your to me the Calgary Flames are still that middling team. They had it really well. They did pretty well last year. They got out of the first round, beating Dallas just barely, and then getting smoked by the Edmonton uh, Oilers. So again, I don't, and it, and it had so many moving parts this year. I don't know. Your team is already shaky right now. Why are you trying to add into they bring this player into a shaky situation? And I just don't think they're gonna get the same. I think these they maybe need, may, may, may need to make some smaller moves. I think goaltend or their I mean their goaltending's been fine. Like, but they're just again a middling team. So I guess getting some scoring would help. But I just don't think it's gonna. I don't think that's really what the, the Calgary Flames should be looking at. They're not trying to keep anyone right now. They've already established they have a core. But I guess if you have an established core, I guess at that point you have to you have to go for it, right? If you have an established core, you're not going for it. What are you doing? You know, If you're not trying to go for it, that means you're rebuilding. You're either rebuilding or trying to playoff contend and or Stanley Cup contend, right? So I guess it makes sense for them to go after a player like him. But I just... I think that another team, like the Islanders, are probably going to try and go for Tarasenko. In my opinion, I think they're, he, he's going to try and... Um, push for it because he wants a team that that uh, he can be built around, right? And I think they would that would be good to throw Ter Tarasenko into that because they how about needing goal scoring? They absolutely need the goal scoring. So, um, other one is the biggest trade piece on the market right now. One of them is actually Ryan O'Reilly. Honestly, I think he's a top five trade piece because he's a center, he's a captain, he's a Stanley Cup winner. You can see right here Stanley Cup winner, oh, Stanley Cup winner, a Conn Smythe winner, Conn Smythe winner, same year as winning the Stanley Cup. He won the Selkie as well. So just a 
huge. I mean, clearly not playing up to his draft stock, or not his draft stock. They're not playing, playing up to where he has been, right? Look at his 16 points in 37 games. So under a point of game type of player right now. And so with that, you're, I, everyone's talking about, you know, Colorado picking them up. Um, Toronto potentially picking up because there's a center, right? And mind you, if you're a center, you can probably you can also most likely play the wing. It's just a, it's one of those things where centers need, it takes a little bit more skill. Um, I know that Toronto's talking about wanting to pick up a winger, and this makes sense. You can swap swap, swap them in. If one of your centers is not playing up to um, where you'd like him to, then I this is where you can you can throw Ryan O'Reilly in there. He does have a pretty a much bigger cap though, which is one of the reasons I think that Toronto's or not Toronto. St. Louis is not looking to sign him, and he's thirty. Mind you, he's thirty-one. Look, thirty-one and thirty three hundred fifty-five days. So he's almost thirty-two years old. He's on the on in the way of the NHL. Being over thirty is you're not looking to sign a guy long term for that. But this is one of the reasons I think that the reason I'm bringing up Brian O'Reilly is because not only is he highly desired, but he actually doesn't want to leave St. Louis. He, according to the Athletic, Ryan O'Reilly, Ryan O'Reilly would be willing to take a discount if that meant re-signing with St. Louis. Uh, now St. Louis is a floundering, um, potentially you're going to miss the playoffs type of team right now. So I think right now they're trying to move him to try and get some assets so they can do a quick, quick retool, right? Just try and flip this thing over, kind of like what Vancouver's trying to do, but not doing well. Um, <laughs> mind you, I know Vancouver will hopefully will get together. I don't like to see teams middling. Like I don't like, I didn't like what was happening to Arizona. They were getting the, the crap beaten out on the, all the whole time, and now they're finally getting some excitability because they've been trading, they've been taking on these bad contracts, and then. And then they're just trying to rebuild. They're doing, in my opinion, them and Chicago are doing the rebuild right. I think uh, the Coyotes are a, uh, a year ahead of them. But I think this is the the right. I think the right move for Ryan O'Reilly is if he wants the St. Louis Blues to be better, he should get traded out. Um, get traded out, and then go. And if you want to resign with the Blues in the off season when they're because they're not going to make the playoffs, in my opinion, they're gonna. If you want to resign with them, then that's great because then you can stick with St. Louis for the next year, two, three years, whatever it is, taking that discount, which is good for the team. The team will have gotten assets because they traded you temporarily, and then you resign. So again, just a, a, St. Louis is the middling team. It makes sense just for Ryan go get traded, have fun, and then and then by the way, take a little bit. It's not a vacation, but like go out to another city and try and win. Like why not? Right? You already got one Stanley Cup. Why not try and win again? It just makes sense. So. Um, next one we got, um, we t we're talking about Anthony Mantha here. So there's some speculation about Anthony Mantha and um, potentially being traded. Um, now, if we look at Anthony Mantha, and why why has this just been brought up, right? So with um, with trades, you typically look for the UFAs. So the UFAs are people that are, are kind of not doing well on their RFA or after their during their RFA status restricted free agent status you're looking for unrestricted free agents because they can sign with whoever team whichever they want and so teams are looking to offload those contracts to let them go perform right and then the team doesn't have to resign them after that because they're unrestricted restricted free agents so they're off your roster so the reason we have not heard of anthony mantha by the way a big boy six five 234 pounds that is a big that's what you typically see for like like most cider is that size he's six five so that's no, it's either 6'3". This is a big winger. So that's awesome. It's You know, he's still still a little older, 28 years old. You know, he used to work, play with the Red Wings. But right now, not having an amazing year right now, 24 points in 47 games. I know there's some conflict with the current um, setup. I think he was scratched the other day. Like, it's just, it's been a little bit rough. So um, if, if they're looking to trade him. Now, the issue with trying to trade Anthony Mantha, a, a person who's not really bringing a lot of value right now is is that he also if you scroll down you can see so this is back when uh eisenman had signed him when it was with the detroit red wings you know four year 5.7 million uh, and you can see right here that his look also his oh man this is great i love this uh, so his aav is 5.7 that, that's a high cap it mind you the red wings just waived verona for like five he's like 5.5 5.3 i believe he is, they just waived Verona, a person you could get for free, right? Um, and we know he's capable when when fully, you know, going, like fully uh, healthy and everything uh, of being a, that type of player. And they were in a trade, right? So 5.7 million to, to try and trade for that, for a player who's not performing up to your expectations um, and also has one more year left is, to me, unlike, less likely. 
a lot less likely because you just you have more t money to spend. And this is where Eisman actually did a good job with this. I thought this was really interesting is that you can see the way this breaks down in the salary. Um, in the first, so you, you think, oh, they're making five, AAV is 5.7 per year. So that means that the team is spending 5.7 per year. No, that is actually not what happened. So 5.7, let's see the first year, Eisman's only paying 4.2 million in base salary and with the bonuses at 300, right? So that's, 4.6 that only the team pays even though the cap is 5.7 they're they're paying a hundred or 1.2 million dollars less on salary so then Irishman does it again 5.3 so they're they're still paying four hundred thousand dollars over what the cap hit actually is now 18 now when washington has him they're paying more in actual dollars right so you talk about a team being able to get a player um the money's not really an issue you think like Toronto, you think like New York, they can pay the, the salaries. They're more worried about staying within the cap. So they're more worried about that cap hit um, with a, a team that like it's a little more middling, that, like middling or uh, rebuilding, I would say. Um, but you're looking at the uh, Coyotes, they'll pay a little extra um, to get better. They, they realize I'm taking more salary. So, and I'm taking that cap hit. So I want to take this, um, I want a little bit higher payment, right? And so you can see that. I, uh, they're actually pay the Washington Capitals currently are paying about eight hundred thousand dollars more than the actual cap hit. So, which is, I thought was so interesting. It's so it's so cool. I uh, it's, it's actually kind of, it's it's cool to see contracts. I love seeing contracts. So, the one thing I would say is that he is a um, so he's got cost control for next year. So I guess that is the one appeal. If you think that he can bounce back next year and and really be an asset to your team, this like this might be like a Brandon Hagel type thing. What Chicago picked up. Brandon Hagel, uh, or no, Chicago traded Brandon Hagel away to the Tampa Bay Lightning. But they knew it was cost, he was going to be cost control for this year and next year. Uh, similar, I think, what they did with Barclay, Goudreau, and um, oh, what's the guy? He went to, uh, not Goodman. I, he went to the Calgary Flames. I, I can remember. can't remember. Oh, Coleman. Not Goodman. Coleman went to the Calgary Flames. So they picked them up because they were cost control. So. Pretty interesting, huh? Right? So, other one we're talking about is Sean Monahan, another big center trade piece, right? It's still young, 28. Look, at, So, you're looking to keep this guy. He's 17 points in 25 games on a terrible Montreal team. Um, you can see he's putting about uh, two thirds of points per game ish, right? So, um, keeping up with that trend, right? Around that area, about, about two thirds. So, he's pretty consistent in that sense, which is, which is good to hear, right? Um, and, uh, the problem is, is he has a $6 million cap. So, um, that would absolutely be that if you go, so I think $6 million. Oh, six point. Uh, that's close. Oh, he does a modify. Okay. Yeah. Well, this is, uh, this is the re reason I brought this up too. So he's on this, signed this with the, uh, Calgary flames. Um, so this cap it. So you definitely at 6.3 Montreal is definitely going to be retained at least or half. I mean, up to half. They can only, so a team can only, uh, take on half the uh salary right or the cap it i would say it, it, they did divvy it up but they're going to take half of the cap it so when we see let's say he goes um so calgary flames uh so montreal has sean monahan and they want to trade it to uh colorado because i know we're looking they're looking for a center right so we'll call this i'm going to make it nice and easy and we'll just call it let's say it's six million dollars right so Montreal can retain half. That means it's going to be three million dollars. And let's say oh, uh, Colorado is, is cap crunch. They really want to. They want someone else to take on that money. Maybe they'll, they'll do Columbus. Will take will take that trade for Monahan, right? So and then they'll they'll retain half and they'll send it to Colorado. So Colorado would send a first to Montreal because they retain three million dollars. And then for Columbus, let's say they they send him a, a four round pick. Right, because they're retaining 1.5 million dollars in cap. So that's that's how you can kind of you can figure out the math, and that's where there's capologists to call them um, to figure all this out and what makes sense for the team to pick up or to not pick up. So th that would be interesting. That makes sense so th for the Colorado Avalanche. They need a center, right? Um, and he's doing well. And my, and he's not looking. My way, Sean, Sean Monahan is, um, you know, with your Suzuki up at line one. I think pretty sure Sean Monahan is playing a line two right now, or um second line center so that would that would take a little bit less pressure off him let him play in the third line maybe fourth line center we know darren helm is still having issues um but potentially might be start play again 
Um, but this would be, give you some reassurance. And again, centers can play wing. So if it ends up being that he doesn't look as good at center or, you know, um, you can just still play him with the wing. So that just make, that makes sense as well. So um, the other one that we got talking about is Vancouver is looking. I, I again, I, maybe I'm, I got to look at this player a little bit more. Um, maybe I, I have to look, up, look at them a little bit more closely. Um, but, oh, it turned green. That's funny. Um, the, uh, the Vancouver Canucks are looking at Damon Severson. I'm uh, not really a point producer. Um, uh, again, more of a defensive defenseman. You can just tell by the numbers, honestly. And you can see he's putting up 20 minutes a night. So a, a line, a uh, line one center. So you uh, like with a, or not center, a defenseman, right? If you have a defenseman that's a number one defenseman, right? Then like 20, top line defense was like playing 22 to 25 minutes. Next one's like 25 to, or 20 to 18 minutes. And then you have the whatever it is, the rest. Um, but the other defensemen are playing for your third line um, defenseman. So he's playing around in a second to almost first line center role or defenseman role. Um, so so that would be great. It's interesting that they want to get a 28-year-old, but I think that's where Vancouver talks about with their retool, wanting players that are not get long-term projects right or, or not the long term they want players that can play now that are nhl players now so i can see that this why they would pick him to um to pick up again it's it's, it's a good he's a fine player but i think maybe or maybe they're probably oh you know it'd be cool for it'd be cool for damon severson to play with uh quinn hughes because Quinn Hughes is a super offensive defenseman, right? And so if you have a more stay-at-home defenseman like Damon Severson, who's not going to be putting up a ton of points, but he's going to be protecting the backside of the defense when Quinn Hughes goes sprinting up there, right? I think that would make sense for – that would actually make sense. Now now I'm, I'm talking my way through it. So that makes sense for Vancouver to go get. Um, let's see. And then last one that I saw that I really wanted to talk about was <laughs> Michael Rasmussen. No one talked about this, right? No one talk, we're trying to figure out what the Red Wings are. Are they sellers? Are they buyers? Um, you know, clearly, I don't think they're going to go for the. I don't think they're going to play the playoffs at this point. I think they're going to be selling, um, trying to get some players out there. But again, this is similar to the the Anthony Mantha contract that, or contract that we just talked about, where he has an extra year left, right? So if we go to Michael Rasmussen's cap friendly, you can see he's on a three year contract, got signed last year. Um, oh, I guess it's not twenty twenty two anymore. Never mind. It was twenty twenty one. It was signed. Holy smokes, time flies. Anyways. This is a player that is playing well right now, um, very well above. I mean, I would say not above his draft stock, but this is playing way above where he usually is. If you look at, you get 81 points career-wise, 81 points in 228 games. Um, that is about a third of a point a game, ish, right? You know, so you're looking at 0. 0.33 points per game. And right now, he's playing it at over a, a half a point per game. Um, and he can play center. He can play center and he can play wing. So again, a versatile player. And again, like we talked about with the Anthony Mantha contract and same with Sean, or not Sean Monahan. Sean Monahan doesn't have a, this guy, he doesn't have a year. Oh, no, he has, oh, <laughs> no movement clause. Uh, no, but he doesn't have actually a year left. But with uh, Anthony Mantha, go over to here to him. Anthony Mantha has that year left. He's, but mind you, this is the, the where you, you think, oh man, Michael Rasmussen does make a little more sense now. But I, I guess no, I didn't know anyone wanted Michael Rasmussen because he was ninth overall and he's not performed to that to that point. But with Anthony Mantha, you can see this guy's playing at twenty four points in forty seven games. He's a center and he's five point seven, right? Five point seven contract, right? If we go to Michael Rasmussen playing twenty four points, forty six games, huh? Ta da! Looks pretty similar, you know. Michael's actually Michael Rasmussen actually has more per game, right? By by one point, but for one game is still. Um, but look at this, one point four six, so one point five essentially for Michael Rasmussen. You're and you're getting the same production as Anthony Mantha, right? Like, why would I take on that more cap and you lock, like got him locked up for next year? So that's very interesting. I, I'm actually really excited about that. I I like my, Michael Rasmussen, but if the Reddings can get better without him. That's okay. We have centers that are coming up, fortunately, because uh, I think that Mike Rasmussen is not going to be your first or second line center. He's a on a Stanley Cup contending team. He's a fourth line center, if he's center at all, right? Maybe a third line winger. So we'll see. I, I, I'm excited. I, I think I like Mike Rasmussen a lot. I think he's a, he's got he's great. I think he's a great player, but it, I want the Red Wings to be good long term. And he's still so young. Look at 23 years old and almost almost 24 years old. He's so young still. And and at the, at the end of his contract, 
and he's still uh, he's still in our face. So you still got him locked up that you could you could decide to sign it for however long you want to. Maybe give him one of those like uh, longer contracts, like four or five years at like you know two and a half million or something like that. You know he's so I I think that's where I think that's the right move. If, if I think the Red Wings should, <laughs> I think the Red Wings should be selling this year anyways. Sell Bertuzzi, sell you know keep keep Verona because he you don't know what's going to happen yet. Um, you know, sell off uh, Rasmussen. It makes sense to sell Perron. Sell Perron, Kuba League, Suter. Like, like, I I have the I want the send them out. Like, you know, sell everything. Get your real core right. Like, and then bring it in. Like after about two years, right? I think they should be selling for another year or two. Like this year and next year, and that following year, that's when you start going for it. You have to you sign the big free agents and everything. So that's just me. But anyways, here's trade talks. Let me know what your thoughts are. Uh, let me know what you want to talk about next. If you have any thoughts or what, tell me what my takes, what takes are wrong. I don't know what takes are wrong. I just talk to myself to computer with a light screen. Like I'm just trying to figure it out. So anyways, like, subscribe, comment. Love you.